Today, when a movement is marked allegro, musicians tend to connect it with a feeling of hurry, leading oftentimes to very high tempi. When in such occasion one of the musicians tries to make the case for a slower tempo, the reactions will be almost by default that the high speed is required by the Italian tempo word allegro. After all, don't we all think it means fast? And so, aren't we supposed to play that piece in accordance to what we today feel as being fast? Notwithstanding, the meaning of the Italian word allegro is more something like cheerful rather than fast. It's not difficult to understand that adhering a contemporary feeling of speed to musical notes written two centuries ago might be a bit of a too narrow approach for finding the true tempo of a piece. In this video, we'll dive into the famous pianoforte school of Karl Czerny, who gives no less than 10 surprising descriptions of the term allegro. Karl Czerny, as you all know, was the best student Beethoven ever had and remained one of his closest friends throughout his entire life. It's also safe to say that Czerny got a decent training in theory from Beethoven as well. It's a well-documented fact that Beethoven required Czerny to read the famous book of C.P.E. Bach, G.S. Bach's second son, The Versuch über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen, or Essay on the True Art of Playing Keyboard Instruments. Before we start with the 10 Allegro descriptions, it is more than interesting to see how this 1756 book has remained present in Czerny's entire life. Here is how, according to C.P.E. Bach, a musician should find the right tempo of a musical composition. And I quote, Die Grad der Bewegung lässt sich so wohl nach dem Inhalt des Stückes überhaupt, dem man durch gewisse bekannte italienische Kunstworte anzuzeigen pflegt, als besonders aus dem geschwindesten Noten und Figuren darin beurteilen. Bei dieser Untersuchung wird man sich in dem Stand setzen, weder im Allegro übereilend noch im Adagio zu schläfrig zu werden. Or in English, the pace of a composition, which is usually indicated by several well-known Italian expressions, is based on its general content as well as on the fastest notes and passages contained in it. Due consideration of those factors will prevent an allegro from being rushed and an adagio from being dragged." End of quote. So Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach gives two general rules on finding the right tempo. One, look at the content of the piece and two, the fastest notes and passages. Fast forward to Karl Czerny in 1839, this sounds as follows. I'm quoting from the third part of his Pianoforte School, chapter 7. The best helps to more certain discovery of the true time may be gathered, first, from the character of the piece, secondly, from the number and duration of the quickest notes which occur in any one bar. End of quote. With a difference of over 80 years in time, it is no less than stunning to see how literally Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach is quoted by Karl Czerny. It's one of those major misconceptions to just assume that people in the early 19th century were not at all, with the emphasis on at all, interested in their tradition, and that we are the first generations that rightfully can claim the position of the uncompromising desire to reconstruct the past. Anyway. Czerny continues by sharing an example of what the character can mean in case the composer marked a movement with allegro. I quote, The character of a piece which is marked allegro may be very various, namely 1. Tranquil, soft and coaxing 2. Thoughtful or enthusiastic 3. Sorrowful or harmoniously intricate 4. Majestic, grand, and even sublime. 5. Brilliant, yet without aiming at too much movement or rapidity. 6. Light, cheerful, and sportive. 7. Hasty and resolute. 8. Impassionate, excited, or fantastic and capricious. 9. Stormy, hasty in a serious as well as in a sportive sense. In this case, we must generally reckon on brilliant effects. 10. 
extremely wild, excited and unbridled or furious. The player must take great care that in practicing a piece he does not deceive himself as to its real character. For all of the above enumerated peculiarities of style may be indicated by the term allegro. And although the composer generally determines more precisely the character of the piece by some additional epithet as moderato, vivace, maestoso, etc., yet this is not always the case and does not extend far enough for all the passages which it may contain. Even to presto, these same observations will apply. End of quote. That Allegro was not by default reduced to the last description in the row we see also in Koch's lexicon, early 19th century. I quote, Allegro hurtig ist eine bekannte Überschrift solcher Tonstücke, die in einem mäßig geschwinden Zeitmaß vorgetragen werden sollen. Or in English, Allegro, nimble, is a well-known heading for those pieces that are supposed to be played in a moderately fast tempo. So you will understand that equating an allegro piece with simply fast is at a minimum reducing an historical practice to a caricature. If you were all real students of my class right now, I'd give you the assignment to find me examples of Allegro movements for each of these 10 descriptions. If you feel the energy to do so, share your results below in the description box and see what others have posted there as well. It is a great way to start thinking on performance practice in a different way. Not narrowing the translation of a score into speed only, but starting from the idea of what was it the composer wanted to share, which feeling, which emotions, which story, which character. And furthermore, you'll notice, when searching for real sound examples, that most of today's performances of the Allegro movements will be demonstrating the last three, maximum four descriptions Czerny gave. If we assume that terms like hasty, stormy, impassioned and wild would have the same meaning today as they had two centuries ago, which is highly unlikely, still we would have to find the majority of Allegro movements to be played within very moderate speeds. One can hardly say that characters like tranquil, soft, thoughtful, sorrowful, majestic, brilliant yet without aiming at too much movement or rapidity, gives permission to very high tempi. Perhaps dive into this channel as well and see if you find your sound examples in the recordings I've made for you. Leave a quick note below those recordings where you land in your research. It's always a pleasant surprise reading recent comments on some of the older recordings I've made. Anyway, if we for instance would take a look at our Hammerklavier Sonata, marked with Allegro, that's a piece that could very well fall under category D. Majestic, grand and even sublime. Up to you if the translation of that character in terms of tempo correlates with this this. Czerny continues by explaining the different note values and their influence on the overall tempo. It's something we have covered a lot in many videos, but I will make more detailed videos on this aspect as well as on the entire pianoforte school of Czerny. It is more than interesting alone to read this. Some parts are even essential reads, I'd say. So, a series of videos made from the perspective as if Czerny is teaching all of us today. Imagine he would literally be teaching you tomorrow. Wouldn't that be an exciting idea? 
is kind of necessary to produce, I believe. So stay tuned for that. That was it for now. Hope this was helpful and if it was, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell as well and help us continue making these videos for you by becoming a member of our community at patreon.com. Link below and in the description box. Thanks for watching. See you soon again.